Uh, before I take a few questions, I uh, just want to say a couple things about the season. Uh, first of all, I thought we took a big step forward this year. Uh, I was encouraged by what I saw. Um, proud of the resilience that the players showed, as well as the leadership of uh, Sean and uh, George and the whole staff. With that said, uh, we understand the championship standard that we have here, and uh, both for the organization and, and our fans' expectations. Uh, this is a proud franchise, and we grade ourselves by our winning record, and, and this year we didn't, uh, we didn't meet our expectations. You know, I think back to when we were one and five, I'm having sleepless nights and, and uh, thinking, you know, is, is this season a bust? And Sean came into my office a couple of days after the Kansas City game and had the Detroit Lions schedule and said, you know what, I think we can be this year's Detroit Lions and bounce back from this. I chuckled a little bit, and, and uh, the next five games were really thrilling and exciting for us as, as owners, and I'm sure for our fans as well. Young players stepped up during that period of time, our vets, our defense had a resurgence, uh, special teams became one of the best in, in the NFL. So then you go to Christmas morning, and, and uh, you wake up after the game the night before, you know, with a pit in your stomach, knowing that you let a, let a significant opportunity slip by. And uh, so I want to make sure our fans understand, you know, I, I get their frustrations. Main message for Broncos country that I would have is uh, we're just as impatient as you are to win here. And we understand we have a lot of work to do this off season to get better. Uh, I want to thank the fans um, for your loyalty, support, passion. Um, I think we have the best fans in the world here. Uh, the the um, last thing I want to say is to all of you, uh, appreciate the media in this market and your coverage of the Broncos uh, this year. I, um, I think you all are true professionals, and we appreciate the way that you cover our team. Uh, with that, I will open it up for any questions. Yeah, Greg, Mike Kliss, Nine News. Um, what gives you confidence in George Payton, and how did it go with uh, that triangle leadership with you, Sean, and George this year? It's been a year now, and um, I, I thought it worked really well, especially the partnership between Sean and, and George. Uh, that relationship between head coach and, and GM is critical. Uh, I was impressed with the way that they handled uh, going from free agency to the draft. Uh, it was great to see a number of young players that George and his staff had drafted previously step up and, and play key roles. Uh, so we, I thought there was improvement this year, and I think George can help us build a, a winning roster here. Greg, Parker Gabriel from the Denver Post. I, I guess two parts. Did, did George come to you midseason and sort of pitch this idea of asking Russell about adjusting his contract and did anything about the way that, you know, unfolded affect your, your confidence in, in George or sort of the, the, the approach to that negotiation? Yeah, I think Sean and, and George have, have both addressed this. Um, so, you know, Sean is responsible for the, the football uh, team we have or coaching that team, um, putting the best players on the field. Uh, he's passionate about that. He's focused on winning. That's that's what he's that's what he's here for. Uh, George handles the player negotiations and contracts. Uh, during that bye week, he reached out to the agent for Russ. Um, George communicated to me that that was a uh, he thought a constructive conversation. Uh, it didn't lead to any changes to the contract. Uh, Russ went on to play for another seven games and then. Sean made the football decision to make a change at that point uh, for the last two games to give the team a spark. Greg, Zach Stevens, DNVR. We saw a lot of fire, passion, intensity from Sean this year, sometimes on the sidelines as well. What did you make of all of that, and, and what was your d dynamic and relationship like with Sean this year? Uh, really good. I, um, uh, I was impressed with how, after the 1-5 start, his leadership to bring us uh, back from that adversity uh, and get in a position to make a playoff push. Um, uh, very impressive. And 
probably the biggest thing here in terms of uh, how I think about the future and, and this organization moving forward is that he established a culture here, is establishing a culture here based on performance, excellence, hard work, accountability, uh, and again, his his focus on winning, and you know, a lot of times that does come out in a in a very passionate and intense way. I know you all see that. Uh, we see a little bit different. We see some of that in the building as well, but we also see another side of him. The messages that he has to our players are terrific. Uh, he's got a great sense of humor. He uses historical anecdotes, um, and uh, so we get to see both sides of that. But at the end of the day, he's focused on winning, and and I love that passion. Greg, Eric Delala, DenverBroncos.com. This season, your takeaway is kind of big picture, both football and business, now that you've had another season under your belt. I guess what were the biggest learnings from year one to year two for you, and how can you use those moving forward? Well, definitely, uh, first and foremost, just again, the the what our fans – uh, deserve and expect here is a very high standard, and that gets re that was reinforced again in the second year. Uh, you know, I would say I'm a big proponent of constant learning, and um, uh, Sam Walton would always say, you know, once you think you've got it all figured out, that's about when you're ready to fail. So I, you know, when we're here year 19, 20, and we're having this conversation, um, I'll still be I'll still be learning. Uh, for me. Personally, practices are a great opportunity. Um, I get a chance to visit with Sean about, you know, plays he's running. I talk to George about what's going on with different players. I'll have a conversation with Bo on the medical side. Westoff will, you know, tell me how he teaches kickers how to kick. Uh, so it's it's a lot of those little things. I, I'm not a I'm not a big believer in. There's one aha moment where you have it figured out. It's a lot a lot of those little things. They give you perspective. Once you have that perspective, you get experience and, and you can make better decisions. Greg Andrew Mason, DenverSports.com. You've alluded to the fan base and uh, relative to the big picture, the cap situations you know, is what it is. Draft your picks are still working your way back capital wise. And of course it's six straight losing seasons, but what reasons do you think Broncos country should have to be optimistic about the direction of where things are going? Uh, yeah, no, I think there's a there's a number of reasons um, to be optimistic. I mean, one, we improved our win total. I expect that to go up next year. Uh, we we broke some some key streaks. Uh, it was great to get the win against the Chiefs. We've got some other other humps to get over in the future. Um, the we had some young players emerge. Uh, significant improvement in special teams. Uh, the medical side, you know, we haven't talked about that much, but we had, you know, last year when we did the end of season, you know, we were really clear we've got to improve that for next year. We'd been one of the most injured teams for the last five to six seasons. This year we're, we're in the top in a lot of the metrics, um, so significant improvement there. Um, but the biggest thing is, is the culture that which sets the floor uh, for how we can go from here. And on that front, um, again, I'm very encouraged. Uh, we know we have a lot of work to do to get to where we want to be, and, and this offseason is going to be a busy one. Greg, Brandon, Cristal from KOA, and you know, you've said over and over how you guys want to be you know, the standard in, in everything as it relates, not just on the field. So I don't know how much we've – I guess we haven't really talked to you since the announcement about the new facility, practice facility has come out. So I guess can you share your thoughts on that as well as you don't need a new stadium, but a new stadium would be – cool, right? And you keep up with LA and Vegas and all these other new stadiums you've been to. And then we know how much fans love new uniforms or the idea of it. So where are things with those, I guess, three things? All right, that's a lot. Um, so let's, let's, start with, uh, let's start with the practice facilities. Our, our building right now is actually great. It, um, uh, the challenge is, um, as it gets older, we were putting, kept putting more and more money in it to keep it up, up to the standard that it needed to be at. It's also gotten small. It's very difficult to expand, and we really wanted to have an opportunity to bring uh, more of our business folks down from the stadium, uh, get people in one building, and then have a building that's really player-focused, central, you know, that, that it's all about the player. And what this is going to enable us to do is get, instead of having the main building, a strength and conditioning area, and the practice facility, we'll pull it all together. Um, the spaces are going to be uh, 
terrific. We think it'll it'll raise the expectation uh, for for the players and and um, and the organization. Uh, stadium is a is nothing to update there. Um, I we're continuing to evaluate options. It's a long-term complex uh, question of what what we end up doing there. But um, uh, I will say I was pleased with the with the impact of the upgrades that we made this last off season, and. Um, I think the fans, from the feedback that we got, they, they appreciated it as well. And your third one, uniforms. Nothing, nothing to announce on new uniforms today. Um, that's also a longer, that's been a, a learning for me. I just figured when you wanted to change your uniform, you just made a new uniform. But um, boy, it's, um, uh, it's a several year process with, with the league and Nike to get, get there. And, and um, so we're, we're uh, We'll be having some things coming there uh, in the future, but nothing, nothing to announce today. Greg, to your right. Jeff Legroll, the ESPN. Uh, just going back a little bit, as you went through your second season, in a particular case like Russell's contract, how much do you want to be briefed on that before any decision is made? What is your involvement in a decision like that? Uh, yeah, as as. CEO, I definitely want to be briefed to know what's what's going on. That that being said, I'm I'm I. You know, entrust people to, to do their jobs, and and um, you know, I don't I don't coach the football team. I don't I don't call the agents and have negotiations on player contracts. Um, again, I I I I believe we um, the approach to uh, Russell's agent was done in a constructive way, um, and um, and it didn't just didn't lead to a, an agreement. Final two, Troy and Stables. Greg. You guys, and you, in this position as CEO and as owner, you guys took a lot of criticism for the way the Russell situation was handled, specifically the benching. Looking back on that now, knowing the bye week is when business gets done, so that timing was going to be weird with the win after the Chiefs. But is there anything you'd want to do differently in how it was handled, looking back at it now? Uh, you know, I'd say anytime um, you have a situation like this, it's, it's, um, and it's, you know, you try and have these conversations. Um, it's not always going to be easy. Uh, I'm sure that we could have handled. You know, you always look back, and there's there's different ways you can handle things. So I'm sure in this case, we probably could have done some things in a different way. But again, our our goal was to to try and see if there was a, a nice constructive path forward that um, that was amenable to both parties. Hey, Greg Arnie Stapleton from Associated Press. Um, both uh, George and Sean mentioned that there was a door open for Russ's return in, in 2024. Given the f substantial financial fallout, should you separate from Russell Wilson, would you encourage uh, them to work it out so that Russell Wilson is your starting quarterback in 2024? Uh, I, I wouldn't. I mean, obviously, the financial part of it is a significant um, component as, you know, in terms of how this works out in the future, but that's not what will drive the decision. The decision, you know, will be driven on what's in the best interest of, of this football team winning games. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it.